Hello and welcome to the third installment of my ARP Axe restoration series. So in the first video I fixed the resonance which wasn't working and that's on the filter board which you can see here. Um, in the second video I fixed the on off switch, there it is, down there it's quite dark, the on off switch. Um, and now onto the main circuit board and there's heaps of problems. Uh, we have, uh, firstly the ADSR wasn't working properly, um, then we had uh, the sample and hold doesn't work, um, and we've got some issues with Portamento and some issues with the keyboard. Um, when we press down the key, we get the note most of the time. When we release the key, the note disappears. Um, uh, so the CV memory for the keyboard isn't working and that's important because when we press down a key once we release um, there may be quite a long release phase in the ADSR so we need to hold the same note and the keyboard isn't generating that voltage anymore it's only generating the voltage when the key's down so when the key is up we need to remember that voltage and it's not doing that so it's changing as soon as I release the key at the moment. So I'm going to work on that first. And as it happens, that is directly related to the sample and hold part of the circuit. Um, so essentially they are the same problem. Um, so I'll explain a bit more about that later when I have a look at the circuit diagram. Um, but for now, my first test is literally just testing the voltage from the keyboard. So we're, we're testing the CV. Um, and I'm going to do it in sample and hold mode first, where this switch is in the up position. It's a bit hard to see. Um, so when we press the low C, we should get zero volts, which we get. And then the next C up, we should get one volt. Which is close enough. Uh, then the next C should be two volts. Close enough. Well, not that close, but I guess it's close enough. There's really no way you can adjust it on the ARP. Um, and the top C, yeah, and it's not quite three. Um, I'd be able to calibrate that on a Moog, but not on this synth. So, um, that seems okay. The volts per octave from the keyboard is fine when we're in sample and hold mode. And that's important because during sample and hold mode, the CV from the keyboard doesn't go through that sample and hold and portamento circuit. It bypasses it and go straight to the VCO. So once we switch down and we disengage sample and hold, that CV from the keyboard now goes through that Portamento sample and hold circuit on its way to the VCO. And have a look at this. So this is our low C, should get zero. We get nearly a volt. Next high C should have one volt. Seven volts! There's something wrong there. And then next C high, we should get two volts. We get six and a half, which is less than less than seven. And the last of all, the high C, three volts. It's all over the place. It's one, seven, six, and three. But there's a catch. When we turn the portamento up in normal mode, it's fine. Zero, one, close enough, two, or ARP's version of two, and three, and sort of three. So it's working when the portamento's up, but when it's down, it's not working. So something's bleeding through this um, portamento pot and increasing the voltage of the CV that's coming out of the keyboard. 
because the keyboard can't provide any more than three volts. There's a three volt drop across the keyboard, so there's zero at low C, and there's three volts at high C, and we can't get any more than that. So if we're getting more, then something's bleeding in, and it's bleeding in through this portamento pot. And I think I've got an idea what it might be. Okay, so I fixed the problem. I'm just going to explain how I did it using the schematic. Um, so this is the portamento, the sample and hold, and the CV memory of the RPAX. Um, so we've just got an input voltage that comes from either the CV or the sample and hold, depending on where the switch is. And that voltage comes in this side. And it's sampled by this FET. So I think it's a JFET, actually. And it just opens and closes to let that voltage through into the hold circuit. Now, when we sample that voltage, it fills up this capacitor. It's quite a large capacitor. And then when the key is released, um, this FET closes. And so we block off this side. And we block off this side because the, the FET's quite got quite a high input impedance and so um, there's nowhere for the voltage to go because both outlets are blocked so it stays stored in this capacitor for quite a long period of time so that's the hold part of the circuit and this side really just acts as an impedance converter because the, it's quite a, a high impedance on this side there's not much current here and it's converted into a much lower impedance by this op amp and we send a lot higher current out at the same voltage. Um, so all the work is done really by this switch turning off and on. When we press the key down, um, the gate signal comes in, opens the switch, we sample the voltage, key comes up, we close the switch, we block it off, we hold the voltage in here, then when the next key is depressed, the switch opens again, and the voltage either drains out or comes in more, depending on which key you've pressed. Okay, so why was I getting weird readings on my CV from the keyboard um, when I was pressing the keys? Um, to explain that, we'd have to explain how um, the JFET transistor works. So how a J an N channel um, JFET would stay on would be the, when the voltage that comes in this side from the CV um, into the source, when that voltage equals the gate voltage, this transistor will be on, it'll be open. So when these two are the same, it'll be open. Now, there's a mechanism for making those voltages the same in this circuit, and it's this resistor here. So if we consider that this diode blocks all other voltages for a second, when we input any voltage here, the same voltage will be sampled via this resistor and go through to the gate. So they'll be the same. So this will actually make sure that that switch is on and that voltage can pass through to the hold part of the circuit. So to turn this switch off, we need to drain the voltage that's in here that's been sampled via this resistor. And we do that by reducing the voltage on this side of the diode. So this diode makes sure that we only get um, voltage travelling in this direction. So if we make this quite low, whatever voltage is in here will drain out and turn this switch off. Now when that voltage is really high on this side, it can build up here, um, but it won't get through. So that allows whatever the CV is on this side to drain in here and fill this gate and turn the switch on. So if we use the key presses on the keyboard as an example, how this circuit would work practically is that you press the key down and you get a 15 volt um, gate signal on this line. So that would bank up against this diode and it would allow the CV voltage to fill uh, the gate um, by this resistor and turn this transistor on and then when you release the key this side of the diode would go to minus 15 volts and whatever positive voltage was in here would drain out and turn the FET off. 
So what was happening in my case, when I pressed the key down, I got 15 volts, but it didn't stop at this diode. It went straight through and filled this gate line with 15 volts. So you, you would bleed 15 volts in by this resistor and you'd even bleed 15 volts in by the FET because this gate, um, if it's too high, much, much higher than the source, this could act like a forward bias diode and you would get voltage bleed through here as well. So we're getting voltage bleeding through into the keyboard CV line. Um, so that's a bit of a disaster. So once I um, replace this diode, that positive voltage when the key is down got blocked again and it allowed the keyboard CV to pass through unaffected. So that was it. So once I replaced the diode, it was fine. Okay, so the portamento and sample and hold circuit's been fixed. I just replaced uh, this little diode here <clears throat> and I'm ready to test now. I'm gonna test at a different place than I did last time. Um, before I was testing the actual CV uh, that comes out of the keyboard and goes into that portamento circuit. Um, but I'm gonna take the voltage from the um, output of that op amp now. So this is on the output of the hold circuit just to demonstrate that it is actually holding. Okay, so the low C should be zero. And it's pretty close to zero. And the next C should be one volt, should hold one volt now. So even when I've got the key in the up position, um, we're getting one volt all the time, which it wasn't doing before. So the next one we should get two. It's a little bit out. And the last one, three. Now that we're taking the voltage from the output of the, the CV memory or the sample and hold circuit, we do have a little bit um, of, of calibration available to us, but it's not very good. It's just the actual zero offset, this plot down here. I think it's R198, um, but that only changes the zero. And if we move the zero, we move all the other octaves. So we can't actually uh, calibrate the slope of the CB across the keyboard, we can only calibrate the zero, and we can only do that after the sample and hold the CV memory. So we're fairly limited on what we can do on the RPAX. Um, but that's all working now, so I might put it back together and see how many things I've fixed. <laughs> So the sample and hold working, and the, and the key memory, so the CV memory, so when I release the key, uh, in the release phase we should have the same note, which we do now. So that's fixed, uh, but all is not quite what it seems. How should I put this? I cheated. Um, <laughs> There's two problems, actually. There was another problem. When I put it back together, it didn't work. Um, had basically the same problem as before. And I didn't see any point in filming another video with the same problem, so I just went ahead and investigated. And believe it or not, I found the biggest sample and hold killer in the universe. And it's these. Yes, that's right. This is the CV in and out jacks for the RPAX. Let me explain with this. The problem is that even though we'd ele I'd electrically fixed the sample and hold circuit and I'd verified that the voltages coming out were correct, and they were held. So when we let in a new voltage, it was registered here and it was held here. So the CV memory and the sample and hold was electrically working. But when I put the synth back together, uh, it still didn't work. So what's the problem? Well, look at the output. I can't believe it actually, I should have noticed before. But the output of the sample and hold circuit goes out that, goes to, to the CV jack and it's connected to the CV in jack 
and comes back into the circuit via the switch and then goes to the VCO. So if this circuit's broken by the jacks not connecting, um, then your signal will never, never come back in again into the circuit. So it'll go out, but there's no CV coming back in. So it still won't work. There's no sample and hold, no CV memory. So the reason why it's working now is that I just put a, a jumper between these two connections on the circuit board to make it work. So I shorted pin one to pin three on J4, um, which simulated these two jacks um, working properly. So you can see here, it's just connected to pin three and this one's connected to pin one. So that short and between those two pins fixed, fixed the second problem in the sample and hold circuit. And here's the cause of the problem. You can see on this jack that this little tab here is touching the outer one so that when the jack, uh, when the plug is put in, it moves away and disconnects it. So you can kind of see the disconnecting happening there when I move it away, like that, disconnects when the plug's inserted and then connects again when the plug comes out. But have a look at this one. It's actually not connecting at all. So that's where our break in the circuit is. So that bent tab on the inside is the reason why the sample and hold's not working and the CV memory wasn't working. And to make a long story short, uh, I couldn't fix the old jacks. Um, whenever I bent the middle one way, uh, as soon as I put it a plug in, it would bend back the other way and not reconnect again. So um, I had to buy new ones um, and they turned out okay. Uh, I just wired them up and it's all fine now. So it's all plugged in and we've got portamento. And we've got sample and hold. Okay, so finally it's working, um, uh, but in testing that I realised that I don't have uh, the filter CV, um, so the filter doesn't track. Um, and that may be another problem with the jacks on the back as well. So uh, I might do that in the next video, um, but at least we got through the portamento on the sample and hold. Um, so that's it for this one. Um, see you in the next one.